Hi folks. As we've been making our mini pallets, we've been starting to tool up and understand how to do this as a production job. So when we first started, we just used some machine steps in these soft jaws to hold our block of raw material. And that actually worked fine, but I wanted something more secure long-term. You know, with, with aluminum like this, it's gonna deform, or uh, they're gonna wear out, and it, you know, oil in there, I just wasn't confident that that would be a good long-term solution. I've always wanted to try the talon jaws from Mighty Bite, and so I was, uh, actually Tormach sells them, which is convenient now, so I picked up uh, the Carve Smart version, like you can see right here. So we've got them in the Haas right now. So all we do is drop our piece of aluminum on here, roughly centered, tighten it up, and these things only hold with 60 thou, which is awesome, and that's plenty secure. I like this recipe, so we need another station, and with the orange vices, there's no carve smarts on the outside. So what we're gonna do is just use a regular soft jaw, happens to be steel. We need the talon grip slot on here. To buy these from Mighty Bite as the hard jaws, it's like 165 bucks or something, and I thought, I've got one of these sitting around. We already bought the talons, and in fairness, the 160 includes two of these. Um, but let's just model one up in Fusion and machine it on the Tormach while this thing's running. The one question I did have is I noticed that they're listed as 1018, but they're hardened to 50 some Rockwell. I didn't think you could actually harden 1018 like, like that. Does anybody know what's up with that? Um, but then we'll have dual stations with the um, talons on the inside and outside. Let's uh, hop into Fusion, model up the CAD, CAM, and head over to Tormach and Machiner. Welcome to their Wednesday widget. It's a really pretty simple job. The one thing I suspect the way these work, this is a 1032 cap screw, is there's a really good fit in this slot. That way when you're pushing against it, it's not being held by the screw so much as it's being supported by this backside right here. So these measure, if you trust calipers, just at half an inch. Let's though take a set of gauge blocks and see what it really measures. So if I take a half incher, 0.5 gauge block, it fits in there pretty well. Does a 501 fit? So if I grab a 0.4 and a 0.101, that would give me 0.501, uh, one thou over half an inch. Does that fit? Help if I had the gauge block correct. Uh, no, I mean, I've wedged it in there, but no. So let's, when we um, machine this, we're gonna walk it in again, and let's try to get it to a similar fit so that this half inch part, our gauge block, fits in there perfectly and then we'll spot drill it and then we'll tap it out. We should be good to go. Right click on your file name, new component, talon jaws. I'll do a rectangle and I'll do it on this plane right here. I lose my origin, turn it back on. Let me click here, drag out. Now D for dimension. These are six by one inch. Um, let's see here, yeah. Six, six this way, and one inch this way, and two inches or so like that. So here's the cool thing now. I'm gonna actually create my other sketch, uh, my slot right now as well. Extrude this down, E, click there, and type negative two. There's my jaw. You can model these as circles or slots. I'm not even gonna worry about it today. Quick and dirty. R for rectangle on the top. Just sketch something through here. Now again, we know that our slot, we want it to be, that's the 0.5 inches and we wanna creep up on it. I also tell you the, uh, and by the way, good trick to use calipers. Lots of people use the end thing on a set of calipers, which is okay, but even better, use the edges right here. We can measure the depth of this pocket by coming down like so, 180 thou. 
We'll call 185. Always go deeper if I need to. Negative 0.185. Oops, I forgot I need to edit my sketch. Right click, edit. So this dimension is 0 .1, uh, 0 0.5. And then let's try something. I want to split to go evenly. There's a lot of ways we could skin the cat here. But if I hit P, I project that, D for dimension, that's going to give me um, an output dimension. I can now say here to here is parentheses this minus this divided by 2. Now that's really annoying. Somebody know why? That should not, in my opinion, convert to a number. It should stay. Um, see, if I hover over it, it says D8. So let's try that. What's this one? D8, and that's D7. Parentheses D8 minus D7 divided by 2. Well, come on. It's like it knows it. Huh. I'll have to see if uh, we can get that fixed. That centers it, though. Stop sketch. We've got our slot, and we'll put our holes in. C for circle. Click there. These are 1032s. Number 21, which is a 159 hole. 0.159 and D for dimension. I'll put the first one a half inch in. So remember this was six inches and uh, we're going a half inch in. Let's make sure, I don't always trust because right now, you saw a second ago how I snapped it too, but it still moves, which is something I don't like. So uh, I'll put a point right here out of place. Now I'll do a midpoint of that point on this line. Now it's locked in and I can do a horizontal vertical to make that horizontal to that. Now it's locked in place. E for extrude, negative 0.6, just deep enough. Create pattern. It's called a rectangular pattern even though we're just going along a line. I'm going to pattern a feature so I'll click this guy first, and now I'll come down here and click the extrude feature that we made. Direction, this line, or any line that's running along X. And then I used to always do spacing, but extent makes it easier. So the extent is going to be distance of five inches. Why five inches? Well, it's a six inch part. The first one is half inch in, and it's gonna end a half inch over here. So that's how we get six minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 gives us the 5 inches. Quantity, we'll just do, I'm not even that concerned about how many of them there are. 8, I guess. To, or honestly, 3 would be fine for what we're doing here. And click OK. I think we're good. So let's hop, save our file. Cam. New setup. Stock. Fix size box. Six by one by two. I will pick a box point of right here. Oops. Maybe it's because the origin's on. We're all having all kinds of fun today, folks. Sorry. Turn my origin off. They need to let you turn the origin on and off when you're in the cam environment. This has been a request for a long time. Huh, selected point works. 2D adaptive clearing, tool 30, my quarter inch end mill, 3300 RPMs at 15 inches a minute. Geometry. Remember with the 2D, folks, don't click faces, click contours. One, two. There's a good card here to a video we did on 2D versus 3D from our Fusion Fridays. Passes. Optimal load is fine. I'm not going to leave anything on the floor and I'm just going to leave 10 thou on the wall. Click OK. And if anybody remembers, we did a video on stop slotting the stupid way where we talk about 
stop not sliding with your tooling. So this is fine, but you know what? Let's push it harder because we can. Let's go. Let's go two thou per rev and just show you guys to see how that looks. I want to clean these two shoulders up. <laughs> right click, create derived, 2D milling, 2D contour. I'm done. Click OK. I'm actually not done because I and I want to walk this in. So I'm actually going to have a lead in instead of it coming directly in from the side here. And we're going to leave some stock. Edit geometry. Do a tangential extension. Terrible name, but it basically uh, just leads you in along the, the path a little longer. You'll click OK. You'll see it comes in further. I like that. But again, I want to walk this in. So we're going to leave radial stock of, say, 2,000. I can't imagine we'll blow our tolerance there. We should That should be enough left that we can come in because I want this. I think the functionality of these is contingent on this dimension being pretty darn spot on to 0.5 inches. Let's chamfer it. 2D chamfer. Notice I didn't model the chamfers. I really don't. Okay, here's a good trip. See if I click this right now, it's going to chamfer the whole top. I don't really want to chamfer the whole top. Hold down Alt on your keyboard, and I can just pick the two inside lines. We'll pick tool 25. It's a mill drill. And under Passes tab, We'll say a chamfer width of 05, just need an edge break. That should be fine. Click OK. Love it. Perfect. And we can we could use that same tool, but I'm trying to not spot with these anymore. I like using actual spotting tools. Drilling. Uh, let's see here. I have a spot drill set up. Yeah, this will work. Click OK. Click my first hole and choose select same diameter. That picks all of them. We're only spotting here. So I'm gonna say the top that I want to uh, start from is the top of the hole. With the bottom of, the, of how far I wanna go on cam is also gonna be the top of the hole with a negative 0.05 offset. That's gonna cause it to only spot, which is what I want. And then we'll drill these with a 159 drill. So I'll set up a new tool, click on the plus, Notice I want to, we did a, we actually did a video on the tool library. You can click to the card here, but I want to create that tool in this file, not in my main steel library, because I don't really want to use this drill again. Very unlikely, at least for a while. New mill tool, 101, I'll do a 0 0.159 drill. This just shows up in the G code, which is helpful. Drill. 0.159, click OK, OK, geometry, same thing, and we will do heights, whole bottom, that's fine. We'll peck it though, we'll say we'll peck every 0.05, click OK, and we should be good. Let's go uh, post this out, actually we'll run a sim real quick. So it goes through, does our adaptive. Clean up. It's chamfers and spots. Drills. Looks good to me. So when I put this in the vise, I noticed just a, I could just feel a little bit of wobble and I don't like that. And I could put it up on parallels, but I'd rather figure out if there's something to it. So I now keep one of these Norton stones. It's great for stoning. I think I saw it on Tom Lipton's channel, but for stoning in, um, you know, your table or a vise. And I'm just going to carefully, um, this is a little bit of a narrow surface, so it'll be really easy to roll, um, to roll it over, which I'm trying not to do here, but if there's a nick or a high spot, this will take it down and you can usually see it pretty easily as well. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, that actually feels a lot better.
I'm going to stick out a little bit on the left side so that we can uh, more easily edge find. X isn't too critical, to be honest. And while we're here, set my Z, let's sweep it and make sure it's flat. Yeah, that's plenty good across. About six inches, that's two thou, that's fine. I gotta share this, guys. This is that Sandvik through spindle drill, 15,000 RPMs, 150 inch a minute, straight plunge, no pecking. So again, 3,300 RPMs, 26 inches a minute, 2,000 per rev. I don't remember the surface footage off the top of my head. Coming back for the 2D contour, which should still leave a little bit of stock, so we'll measure it before we take the part out to see how much we need to skim off. It's interesting, something I've been trying to learn more about lately, not crazy complex, but is this idea of when you're taking really small radial cuts, you have a much lo lower effective um, chip thickness, which means it's actually easier to rub. In other words, it can be bad to take too thin of a cut because you're never letting the flute actually dig in and, and, and shear off like it's supposed to with a cutting action. And I'd rather you can rub or burnish, which has the benefit of looking like a, a good service finish sometimes, but boy, kills your tools. I mean, cuts 80, 90% of your tool life off if you do it a lot. It's kind of a similar, different, well, it's a little bit a similar thing to smaller diameter inserts on uh, lathe where you're trying to reduce the tool pressure and dig and get enough to activate the chip breaker. Uh, I think it's still a little bit different though in, in terms of the actual cutting action. Stamper looks great. Twenty one hundred RPMs and I don't know the I forget what the, the path title will tell me. Uh, six and a half inches a minute. I thought it was faster than that. I guess not. Yeah, six and a half inches a minute. So this is a 350 plus a 140. So this would be 490. Okay, that fits. 350 plus 141 would be 491. And that fits, but that feels like all I'm gonna get. 492, or yeah, 492. Um, so yeah, sort of, you know, I'm kind of, I can get it in there a little, but um, that's kind of where I'm at. So let's go um, do a little bit of additional radial, or 2D contour, clean this up, and we should be good. I think maybe five.
So that was off more than I expected. We were at 491. Our, we have a 0.5 inch diameter slot. So we were off by nine thou. I left two thou for each side. So that should have been, um, it should have measured 496 and it measured 491. So we were off by five thou total or about two and a half thou per side. Most likely that's, uh, well, I wanna blame the end mill. Uh, could be a combination of end mill diameter, could be run out. Although run out would make it, I think, bigger, cut bigger than smaller. But we'll see. Um, I t only took two thou additional. So in theory, this should be a total of a half a thou off. Or if the world well, uh, stars align, this would fit a 499, but not a half inch gauge block. I could be wrong. Could he eat my w words here? We'll give it a try though. So 350 plus a 149 gauge block gives me the 499. Ooh, nope. Not quite. Ooh. So we were at, we have a five inch, 0.5 inch slot. I was at 491, that's what I was measuring. I had left 2,000 per side. So we should have been at 496. I was actually getting 491. So there's 5,000 difference there, or two and a half on each side. I reduced it by 2,000. So in theory, if this is all perfect and there was no such thing as tool deflection or any error, this slot should end up still under that undersized by one thousandth of an inch. Let's see what she does. I'll be honest, it kind of sounds like a heavier cut than I was expecting for only taking a couple thou off. I hope we didn't uh, hope we didn't go too far given that the point was to walk in on it. So here's a 147 plus 35. So this would be 497. So this ought to fit no problem. Good. 498 fits. Ooh, 499. Perfect. That's awesome. That, so it's nice to see when things, it gives you confidence that you're actually doing the right kind of work uh, and you're sneaking up on it. So now, does the half inch fit? Not really. That's perfect, guys. That's freaking perfect. More importantly, does our talon fit yet? Shouldn't. I should need to go another thou. And it's just so close. So we're going to do that. We're going to take a skim pass Honestly, even a spring pass would probably work. I'll move it in, you know, three tenths on each side and see if that gets us there. Three tenths on each side. Let's see what she does. Man, again, that sounds loud. Uh, 
sounds like it's taking more of a bite. I really, honestly, I cut so much aluminum. I'm just not used to it. I'm not as in tune. Your ears are so powerful in the shop. You can hear, you learn your tools, you learn your machines, you learn what things are supposed to sound like. Not just squealing and chatter, but even just the way a cut sounds right. And that sounds heavy, but I think I'm just wrong. I think my ears are just calibrated for aluminum. Funny to think back, so this is totally random, but uh, some like Discovery Channel show was talking about how I think it was Napoleon's finest set of china and silverware for entertaining the highest guests were aluminum because back in whenever the 1800s, uh, aluminum was so expensive because we didn't have smelting, I guess, like we do today, that it was considered the most precious of precious metals. How funny is that? Now, isn't aluminum toxic to people in some form? I, I can't remember. Okay, well, screw the gauge box. Look at that. Oh, folks, no friction and no play. I mean, no play. Here's a half inch. Obviously, that's gonna fit. So let's see, does a 501 fit? Barely, I mean, no. Oh, did it, did it fit? Okay, so it's t it does fit, but it's kind of, you can't really move it, so. Um, I could have maybe taken a, just a tenth or two less, if you believe that, but I'm happy with that. Just like that. Uh, I was laughing. The folks at Flex Arm were just asking us about our open house this year. Uh, they were more than happy to come down again and bring one of their big arms, which is really cool of them. All about uh, not only made in America, but made in Ohio. What do you think, Judd? It's pretty cold out, right? Hey, Judd, is it cold outside? Do you want to go outside? Do you want to go, do you want to go outside? So this part's done, it now, and you can see how we had full access to the side, which I like, it now, it's flipped over, and cut on this side, and I, you know, we had two stations going, I'm doing one now as we sort of troubleshoot some, some tool pass stuff, so now let's flip the carve smarts around on the talons, I have to move the center post on the orange vise, but for now, just like so. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Take care. See you next Wednesday.